Today I'm joined by Katharina Stenholm. Uh, you are currently active as an independent advisor, uh, but you are also the former council member uh, and member of the Food and Nature Board of the World Business Council for Sustainable, uh, Sustainable Development. Uh, and you are also the former global leader of the Nature uh, Sustainability Team and Global Procurement Organization of Danone. Absolutely, yes. So thank you so much and welcome to this Zoom call. Um, and our topic for today is responsible leadership. Um, and we would love to hear your views on responsible leadership and what does responsible leadership represent to you. So um, if you would be so kind as to give us your ideas. Yes, I guess responsible leadership is something we talk a lot about today. And I think uh, mostly, uh, I think the discussion uh, centers on making decisions that take the interest of a large stakeholder group into account. So not only the interest of the shareholders, but also employees of a company, customers, suppliers, the environment and society at, at large. And uh, I think uh, another way of looking at it is obviously a responsibility for multiple bottom lines. So there is the economic bottom line, of course, uh, in a business context, but also then the environmental and, and social. And I actually saw a really nice definition in a recent blog post where somebody talked about acting with integrity in, at the moment of choice, which I think is actually a, a nice way of describing responsible leadership. I guess at the end of the day, it all then comes down to taking action for a better future for all. That's a really nice way to put it, acting on integrity when making yeah. a decision. Um, well, we discussed before that um, I either see sort of two strategies. So how there's either an organization who has a board of directors and non-executives who sort of take in responsible leadership as a whole uh, in general, or how you see organizations also appointing a, a, a CSO or a, a, a chief sustainability officer or a sustainable leader. Um, since you have been a sustainable leader within a large global organization, um, how difficult is it for a sustainable leader to sort of translate uh, the sustainable thinking or uh, choosing with integrity towards other senior leadership within the organization? I think there were uh, many points in what you just said. If you start with that, like how would you organize yourself? Like what is the role of a sustainability leader? So I would guess ideally in an organization, there would not be uh, the need for a CSO. Because now when, uh, if you really see that this is the new way of doing business, then you could argue that this is a shared responsibility uh, amongst all the leaders uh, within an organization. But on the other hand, uh, we all know that there's quite a lot of change that needs to take place. We need to rethink uh, how we think about our businesses. And that's, I think, where CSOs very often then get appointed. Uh, I think in many organizations, they will turn out to be uh, transition roles, transformation roles. And when you really transform your way of doing business, uh, as we said before, this will then all be, be integrated. Then your, your comment or question on how to influence other senior uh, business leaders. And I think that's really where for sustainability leaders, you would like to have people who are influencers, uh, have great influencing mm -hmm. skills. Because uh, I think it uh, comes down to sitting down with your colleagues and really understand the environmental externalities of, of your business, both positive and negative, and also understanding the full social footprint you have in your entire value chain, both upstream and downstream. And I think for me, then an interesting way of starting to tackle the opportunities and the challenges is to think about if there was a newcomer, uh, a business that wanted to disrupt you, how could they possibly disrupt you by thinking about these environmental, social uh, matters in a different way from how you have traditionally thought about them? And use that as a source of inspiration for how could we reimagine our own business before mm -hmm. getting disrupted? And for me, this has the, the beauty of, well, first of all, it's a, it's a collective piece of work to think through this, but then you really start to embed your sustainability strategy into your business strategy. So then it's, uh, an integral part thereof, rather than something that happens on top of or uh, on the side. 
Mm. And um, in your experience, um, because Health Sustainability Goals is not only internally focused in your own organization, but especially externally focused, how important is it in a sustainable leadership role to sort of um, engage other parties outside of your organization? So, uh, for example, the community or have other people or organizations in your or in your supply chain? I think it's it's absolutely imperative because you know the, the challenges we are tackling they are bigger than any organization. I don't think that there is um, a company or another organization who would say we can go out and solve this alone. So I think it will all be about uh, uh, collecting uh, groups of like-minded people, organizations, entire value chains, and start to reimagine the, the future together. So I think then also for sustainability leaders, those with collaboration skills and genuine interest in building partnerships and delivering together is going to be critical for, for success. What would you what, what would you advise uh, new sustainable leaders on where to start? Because sustainability can be such a huge topic and so large. How do you make it concrete into how what can I do today? So I would really think about it through uh, materiality assessment. So really think about uh, where is where do we have the biggest uh, footprint, based on an uh, environmental or social, or on the governance side, where do we have the biggest opportunity to really make a change? And I think you have to be choiceful because there's just too much to, to do. So I think once you understand where can we really have an impact, uh, where can we really go for transformational change rather than uh, nice initiatives, uh, mm. then uh, I would use that materiality as my, my guiding star. And that's obviously then going to be dependent on, on your business context. And again, if you think about how you want to reimagine your business, then that will also guide you to think about, okay, so what will be material for this new way of, of doing business? Where do we need to, where do, where do we need to start? Mm. And um, um, Hap, what would you advise to organizations now starting on the topic of sustainability as to what are the most easiest recognized benefits for an organization to really focus and to really invest on receiving and getting results on ESG goals? I think, well, uh, stating the obvious is, is obviously, I think, uh, focusing on sustainability is to be the future-proofing uh, your own business. Because you know, if there's not a healthy society, if there's not a healthy environment, I don't think that any business will thrive. In, in the long, long term. But then uh, on a more concrete level, uh, I do think that a strong ESG performance uh, is going to be important both uh, when we talk about attracting talent uh, and a certain extent also capital and, and financing. Now, because people uh, today tend to want to work for uh, companies with a purpose, and we all know that there will be a shortage of highly talented individuals. So by uh, having strong, uh, a well articulated purpose and strong ESG performance, I think we can position ourselves as employers of, of choice. And we also see more and more uh, companies who have their financing linked to ESG performance. So there could be uh, conditions in uh, financing agreements uh, for better ESG performance uh, and more favorable terms. And we all know that there's quite a lot of asset managers of today looking for sustainable investment opportunities. I think there's mm. a, an opportunity there as well. And so it's a very, very tangible, uh, immediate uh, benefit. Immediate from, results and benefits. From strong uh, ESG performance. Yes, well, you said a very important thing in terms of ha attracting talent. Um, how one of the new arising, of course, talents that needs to be searched is the actual sustainability leader. If you were to be your CEO of a company um, and you would want to attract your own sustainable leader, what would you look for? What would you select on, on competencies or qualities or experience? In one way, I think we are talking about uh, the leadership skills of the future. To say that at the end of the day, you want everybody to be your uh, CSO in, in the organization. So I think what uh, in future leaders we really are looking for are people who can think out of the box and who can shape the conversation and shape the, the future for, for something new. I think we want people who are brave to take action, the people who are prepared to trial and, and, and learn. 
Uh, we spoke already about the collaborative, uh, because these challenges are too big to do alone. I think there's an element of, of uh, caring uh, people, people who care for themselves, care for their teams, their business and society, society at, at large. But then if really specifically, if you talk about hiring a CSO, uh, as I said, uh, at least in the transition phase, these roles would be, uh, would be needed. If this is about reshaping your business strategy, uh, solid business acumen uh, goes uh, without saying. But then I think there's a really interesting way of looking at um, a CSO. It's that somebody who is really thinking about uh, the ecosystem of the business ahead of their own ego system. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Yes. A CSO who is looking at what can I achieve, uh, what are my goals, I think is set up for, for, for failure. Because it's all about how can we transform this, this business. And there's uh, some really nice uh, work being published in, in the last year so on how to replace your ecosystem uh, with the ecosystem that you are building for, for your organization. I think that would be a good threat uh, in any CSO. Well, that's a great answer, uh, Katharina, because it sort of brings us back to the full circle of hand making choices with integrity. Um, and, and you you made the ego system and the eco system. There's a big difference. Uh, and I think the underlining, of course, is integrity. Is this good for me or is this good for the ecosystem? Um, I, I want to be conscious of time. So um, I, ha I want to uh, I thank you so much for joining me and for sharing your thoughts. Um, and uh, I hope uh, together we can all build a more responsible world and a more sustainable world for the future. So Absolutely. thank you so much for, for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you. It was, it was great to be here. And, and I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, we all need just remember one thing, and that is to take action. <laughs>